father himself. I'm tired of the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. Damn. There they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? Hey, hey, what's up, homie? Right with God. I love you. Real reality television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on cheaters. Greetings. I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching another riveting episode of Cheaters. Meet Ed Becker, a man riddled with insecurity in his relationship with girlfriend Cynthia. Having reached his wit's end, Ed turns to cheaters for some answers. Ed Becker age 56, suspects that fewer visits and less intimacy could be possible signs his relationship is in jeopardy. I've been going with this girl now a couple of years. I've seen her on a re regular basis and uh, it just the past little while it's, it's gotten a little less than I expected. You know, she uh, seems to be working more than she did before and having less time to spend together. Well, we've had a, a few more arguments than we really? normally, yeah. It seems to be a little more tension than it was before. She's uh, quicker to snap. And, uh, you know, she's made some indications that she's not happy with the situation in like, a, uh, you know, we just, I feel like we have a committed relationship, but, you know, she wants the marriage and all that. And the, the main reason I think there's something wrong is before there was like always an attempt on her part to get together. And, uh, you know, she'd be like put off if I didn't make the time. Right. Now it's sort of like uh, even when I, you know, say when I make the time, mm -hmm. uh, she has a, an excuse or two why not. I don't want to believe it, but I, I feel like with the the time decreasing and like I said, the the little, it, it you know, it's hard to put it in words. You just have that feeling, and, you feel know, like and, yeah, and that oh, I don't know that look. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Cynthia Howell, age 39. Ms. Howell has led Ed Becker to believe they are in an exclusive relationship. Our investigation begins at Howell's business on Monday morning documenting her day-to-day -day activities. At 11.45 a.m., Howell is spotted leaving with an unknown companion. Investigators note that Howell has fresh-cut flowers placed in her left hand. Howell and companion leave the business in a mid-80s vehicle, maroon in color. The car is followed to a local restaurant where Howell and companion remain for approximately 45 minutes. Howell and companion leave the restaurant and proceed back toward Howell's business. Upon their arrival, the companion proceeds to a back alley where the two engage in romantic activity. Earlier in the day, Ed records a telephone conversation inviting Howell to lunch. Oh good, just working, working. Yeah. Want to go to lunch today? Oh, I can't. I have a, a, a meeting with a client this afternoon for lunch. Apparently, Howell's business lunches are as frolicsome as they are flavorful. Investigation Day 2. Cheaters investigators stake out Ed Becker's residence in anticipation of Howell's arrival. The information is derived from an earlier telephone conversation between the two that day. Hey, um, I'm going to get off work a little bit early today. How about if I come over to your house and then if I get off work? Oh, yeah, I'll be right. Yeah, but I won't be able to stay very long because um, I have a meeting with another client for dinner. Oh, yeah? Yeah. So how long are you going to be? Uh, probably about 30, 45 minutes. Just enough time, you know, for us to have a quickie. Howell is spotted leaving Ed's residence right on schedule. Investigators follow her in a late model white Volkswagen bug. Howell drives directly to the unknown companion's residence where she remains for one hour and 45 minutes. On day six, investigators uncover the conclusive evidence for which Ed has asked. With a special camera equipped with infrared lighting capabilities, investigators capture footage of Howell and companion in a romantic interlude in front of Howell's residence. Investigators report that Howell invites her companion to finish up where the two left off at lunch. After the break, the confrontation.
With Cynthia's depraved nature exposed, Cheater summons Ed to reveal the sordid findings. Prepared to face the indisputable truth, Ed struggles to maintain his dignity. By the time you came to me, you had a pretty good feeling that something was going on. Something has been going on. And we weren't quite sure uh, the situation here, if it was just business lunches, and it very well may be business involved. He drives this mm -hmm. Dodge. Mm -hmm. He's taken to her to lunch several times, at least two or three times a week since we've been on them. Here they are actually making oh, out pretty heavily. When he went to take her back, they pulled in the back of the pager shop, and I guess she had a little extra time before she had to go back to the shop. But as you oh, can wow. see, this, this is, uh, I think that would be the evidence that you were looking for. Yeah, definitely. There was another time, and I hate to, to say it like this, but she was at your house, uh, left your home, and went straight to his house. He actually goes into her house at this point hmm. and stayed for hours. Unbelievable. That's when she told me she had a rough day the next day and had to leave early. Leave early. Yeah. Yeah, yeah she left my place late. Yeah. Left his place even later. Yeah. What has she been telling you for the last two years? Well, well, she's, you know, wanted to. Actually, she seemed to want to make it a little more permanent than I did. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, she's just basically told me she loved me all the time, and I was the only one in her life, and the only one for her. Do you find this hard to believe after the information that she was telling you? Well. Yes and no. I mean, it's, it's, I didn't want to believe it, I guess, you know, is the main thing. But uh, the fact that it's been kind of tapering off, I, you know, I felt something. That's why I came to you. Mm -hmm. Felt there were some problems. So it wasn't totally unexpected, but I was hoping it, you know, wouldn't end like this. I, I felt that she was being totally honest with me. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, that's the most disturbing part of it. I don't think it matters. Would you, what be, her response is. would you be interested in trying to work it out with her, you think? Um, I don't, I don't think so, not at this point. Even if she said, please forgive me, I'm on my knees. I don't believe so, no. Yeah. So that was the evidence that you wanted yeah. to? Yeah, oh, definitely. You can make a decision to cut clean this? Yeah, I'd just rather cut it clean right now. Yeah. I mean, I would like to know what her reasoning was, like I said, why she would have lied to me that period of time. Our detectives are on them right now. And uh, we'll go over to our staging area where, near her place where they may be together. And if they are, then we'll just go and, and we'll confront them and talk to them. Oh, we just walk this way. Can you see, can you see out the window? Yes, I can barely see the front of the van. But, but you're parked in a good location because there are vehicles parked right behind the van. All right. Well, we're in position. Our client is ready, and he wants to have a talk with her. So. Okay. Stand by. Stand by. What's going on at that table? We've been done eating you know, for like 10 minutes now. We're still talking. Can you catch any word of the conversation? No way. Okay. All right. We'll just keep the best you can, stay with them. No, you know, you still have to, at, the, at this restaurant, you have to pay on your way out in order to So you still have Correct. another 20 Correct. seconds to make your move. Is there a line at the cash register? I can't register? see the one. They got a wall block in. You see the one? Okay, she's picking with me. Up All right. Check it out. Not yet. She's picking up her purse, but sitting, so. She put this up. He's grabbing her seat. And she's grabbing her seat off the table. He's looking at it. He's standing up. She is standing up. Walking All right, huh? Walking. Yeah, stay with me right here. Right here. Okay. 
excuse me. Excuse me. Excuse me. What the Cynthia. heck? What's going on? Cynthia. What are you doing? What are you doing here? What are all these you people doing here? My name's Tommy from the TV show Cheaters, and she's been uh, seeing Ed for the last two years uh, in an exclusive relationship, supposedly. That's what she's been telling him. Uh, you know did you know that she was I in an exclusive relationship? I can't imagine. I, I called you for lunch. You said you couldn't make it. You had to be at the shop all day. Didn't have somebody to cover for you. And now you're having lunch with this guy? Well, you know, I was going to tell you, but this is not the way for you to find out. Not the way? No. Well, when were you going to tell me? How long are we going to wait? Eventually. Yeah, eventually. Yeah, eventually. And who's this guy? What the hell? Who's this guy? I mean, what? Why would you be going to lunch with him? When I asked you, and you said you couldn't make it. We have video surveillance of you telling Ed that you couldn't see him, you were all busy, and when in fact you're going to lunch Jesus. with this gentleman. Is this all true? And then on top of it, uh, you left his house last week in the evening after spending two or three hours with Ed, and we followed you going over to this gentleman's house. Coming up, the conclusion. his house last week in the evening after spending two or three hours with Ed and we followed you going over to this gentleman's house. Did you know that she had been seeing uh, Ed for the last two years? I don't even know years? this guy. I've never seen him Scott, before. will you take me back to my office? Yeah. Well, well, no. I, no. It, Would you like to explain hey, whoa, whoa, yourself? Whoa, 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 whoa. No touch. It, There's no need to touch. No need to touch. Don't turn it on me. This is it's, wrong. I, well, this this may be, but what you were doing is wrong. So you could have told, totally told me. You could have told me. You're you didn't right. have to go through this. You, yeah. You didn't need to Would go you like to explain well, your, no, explain absolutely. why you were treating no, him like no. that? Scott, will you take me back to my office? You don't want to talk about why you were lying to him? You, you gotta be kidding me. This is really all part of this. Well, you told him that you wanted more from a relationship. I don't understand. Then you were yeah. seeing this gentleman. Who are you? Right. My name's is is What's my life any your business? Well, I'm, well, he's I my came client. To him. He yeah, came to me with this problem. Well, that's too bad. We're out of here. You don't want to talk well, to me about no, it? No, I don't. How about you? No, no comment. Well, what has she been telling you? Can you I tell me? I don't even know. I want to talk about this. She's yeah, been talking yeah, to you. What has she been telling you? That that you're the only one? Like she's been telling Ed? I, I don't want to talk about it. Excuse me. I need to get out. We need to get out of here. Did you know that she was in a relationship with him? I don't know anything him? about anything. Has she been it's telling you that she left? Why? I don't want to see you. Well, what? Haven't Cut the cameras! Darn, I don't know what's just talk about this. What has she been telling you? I don't want to talk about this. Did she tell you she loved you? Uh, yes, all that. Of course. I don't want How are you, buddy? Oh, I'm okay. I'm just, you know, just a little nervous here. I figured that's the way she would. I just know her. She's a hothead, and I knew she'd go berserk at this. But that's okay. Like I said, I'm just glad to be finished with it. Are you done with her? Yeah. Yeah, if that's your attitude. Yours, they don't call me. Yeah. The confrontation behind him, Ed finds comfort among friends and family. At the end of the show, Cheaters finds out if Ed's faith in love endures. But next, Cheaters takes a look back at the Connie Washington case, where Johnny Burkhalter made an appearance on Cheaters. Johnny returns to discuss his life since the confrontation. Johnny Burkhalter, age 29. Johnny returns to Cheaters ready to take full responsibility for his actions. Me and Marshall and I was eating dinner, and uh, we was at we was at the bowling, and uh, all of a sudden I see these cameras come in, and I said what? And then I see Connie, and I said oh, what is this? And uh, Marshall said that's your that's your wife. I said I said yeah that's her. So she come in went to cussing and. Then, and uh, I got up and I ran in the man's restroom and she was saying, you think I won't run in there at you? I will. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. You. I know who this is. You. Don't be so. you. you with my man. You. 
<laughs> you no good, dog. You gonna cheat on me. Who is you? Don't run up in there. Come out, you think I won't come? I'll come in there and get you. Don't. It's on. You know better than what you doing. Let me talk to you. Let me yeah. Talk. Let me Why? Talk. Let me Why? Talk. Let me talk. Why? I ain't mean it. I ain't mean it, baby. You love that? No, man. You have I a kid it. in my house. I love you. Please, baby, please. Well, that's just like when I met Marshall. You know, I we me and some friends of mine was at a club and uh I spoke to her, she been speaking back, you know, and I kept going I kept going to that club to see Marshall. And uh all of a sudden we hooked up and uh I told her that, you know, I liked it, her, she liked it, me, you know, we went to sharing money and, you know, we was drinking all sorts of brews and wine, and I just got hooked. I just never thought I would ever get caught cheating, though. I don't know what he's doing for her. He's taking care of me and my child. Cause I'm coming for you. you I'm coming for you. You no good, dog. You, what you running for? You what you running for? What you running for? Why you, no, 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 run. Time to run. What y'all doing, huh? Yeah! Thought I wasn't gonna find it. You love me, right? Well, it wasn't no excuse that I could have made because I was wrong. But like I said, I love Connie and I've been with her, you know, for five years and and I just never thought, I just never thought that I'd ever get caught cheating on her. And but I did. She ain't here helping your bitch. She ain't here doing a thing for you. <laughs> You took her to the front. You took her skating. You won't take me we, nowhere we, no we more. To the front, baby. We, we, no, we, we've been together. So good, so sweet at first. I want to be with you. Yeah. I love you. Why you? As a why? Baby, it was just, I was drunk. Well, that's always, excuse me. You're was, intoxicated with some. I went back to Connie and uh, we talked for a day and a half and uh, we had sex, and uh, we talked talk some more about it, and she would ask me, would I ever cheat again on her? If I ever catch you again, I'm gonna kill you this time. I ain't gonna call cheaters no more. I'm gonna get a gun, and I'm gonna kill you. And I said, I said, well, baby, I ain't gonna cheat no more. You ain't gotta worry about me cheating no more. And I bought this hat, and you got it here with this. I can't believe you do don't me like that. Man, don't take it like I thought that. you loved me. I what? do love you. I love you. you. I was I in my you. life with you. Five years, I do love you. Oh, hey, Dirt to me, you hear me? Dirt! Well, yeah, I was messed up, but I guess it all it all happened for a reason. You know, me and Connor been together for five years, like I said, and I loved her and I know she loved me, but it's just the thing that I was doing that was wrong. And I was I had got caught cheating that night. Ed Becker kept his promise to himself, leaving Cynthia Howell immediately after her confrontation. Ed attempted no reunion with her and stated to cheaters that his career was more important than a relationship at this point in his life. Howell maintains her relationship with Ed was never exclusive and that she was free to date whomever she pleased. Howell's male friend was identified as Scott Siebold, who plans to maintain... Oh, yeah, we got it right now. They're heading south. I'm tired of the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. <laughs> there they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? Hey, hey, what's up, 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 homie? Hey, hey, what's Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Welcome. I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching Cheaters. Meet Christina Ramirez, a young woman whose fiancé is less than enthusiastic about their upcoming marriage. In need of reassurance, Christina approaches Cheaters to discover the cause of her fiancé's hang-ups. Christina Ramirez age 26, suspects the phone calls her fiancé is fielding from unknown females may be indicative of the communication breakdown at home. I've been with this person um, for about a year and six months. I, asked, I was very serious with him. I actually asked him to marry me. 
Well, he acts like a father to them. He supports us, and um, he 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 acts just like their father. I mean, there's there's nothing that he wouldn't do that their father hasn't done. You know, he's more of a father to them than their own fathers. He started getting phone calls from this hospital that he goes delivers in Fort Worth to. I called the number back and the girl said, you know, she didn't call for him. When we got into a big argument, we fought and he kind of shoved me out the door and, you know, I could hear him inside the house saying, um, I just needed a friend, Vanessa, and he denies it to this day, but I heard what I heard and he said what he said that day. So I kind of had suspicions that he was messing around. Lately it's been like, how can I say it, it's like wham bam, thank you ma'am. and. Yeah. <laughs> Just, just get it turn down. around and he turns his way and I turn. It's not very cuddly anymore. It's not, you know, he before it was passionate and yeah. you know, lay next to me and just, you know, hold me. And now it's just like he does it and that's it. All I want to know is that if he's messing around, he needs to just let me go and go on, you know, be a man and say, hey, I'm. You know, he says he, it's, we're going to go our separate ways, but yet he's still sleeping with me. He still calls me. He still, you know, fondles me. He, I mean, it's, he's giving me, he's leading me on to something and he's saying something else. So I don't know what to expect or what to believe anymore. It makes me wonder even more and it makes me feel bad. You know, like, Achieve. you know, who else, yes, who else is, is getting this man's love that he's not giving it to me anymore? Just want to know the truth. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Cesar Moncada, age 24. The suspect is a rental store salesman who's attempting to scam his fiancee, Christina, into believing he has eyes only for her. Cheaters detectives get the goods on Mancata the minute covert cameras begin rolling. Day one of the investigation documents Mancata and an unknown companion purchasing a 12-pack of beer from a local convenience store. After shopping, the two decide to settle in at a rented room in a nearby motel, where they remain for several hours. Further video surveillance reveals not only the license plate of Mankata's companion, but her identity. Detectives discover she is a single mother of two, who, like Christina, believes she is the only woman in Mankata's life. While the companion is unaware of the fact that she's playing second to Mankata's fiance, cheaters detectives are watching Mankata work both women and are ready to close in on him before the middle of the first week. After the break, the confrontation. With Caesar's despicable behavior exposed, Cheater summons Christina to unveil the candid surveillance. Christina leans on her close friends while she studies the footage. Hi. This is your girl. Yes, it is. I'm happy you came out to support her. Yeah. Your friends are all about, right? You guys are back. Yes. These are my friends, and Caesar knows right here. He knows who they are very well. He knows that these are the girls that I run to when he leaves me. These are the girls that I ran to when he left me. These are the girls, too, when I ran to when I told him I wanted to marry him. I asked them for their opinion. Let me ask you. Girl, I'm, just, uh, <laughs> I'm just so, I don't know, Jordan. I don't know. I'm just nervous, man. Is there anything uh, that's happened over the past few weeks that y'all talked about uh, that has been, um, that's led to making you feel more comfortable in your relationship, that you try to make you more comfortable? Yes, I've, um, I've dealt with, he's calling me now every day and telling me he loves me and he wants to make love to me. That's Danny's boy. Oh, okay. Here he is getting in the car with her. 
It's the same girl. And, and this same girl, well, actually, it was two girls involved. He had told you that he wasn't feeling good that night mm -hmm. and wasn't going out when, in fact, uh, he didn't truthfully go out. He went in, and I'm going to show you exactly where he went into. Uh, a motel. He picked up a couple 12 packs. 12 packs. Okay. He's trying to get up. He didn't feel all that sick, girl. They did go and spend uh, four hours in the motel uh, with two cases of beer, or two 12 packs of beer. Um, I'm sorry to have to show it to you this way. Uh, our job is to find out the proof, and, and that's what you wanted. And, and so now you can make a smart decision in whatever you want to do. Okay? Let me ask you, do you want to confront him and her together tonight? We do have evidence they are together tonight, and they are coming to a location that we believe we know exactly where they're going to be. What will you ask him? I just feel dumb. I feel real, real naive and dumb, and you know I'm 26 Eve and dumb, and you know I'm 26 years old. I don't need to play these games that he's playing with. Yeah. Well, <laughs> let's get to the bottom of it and let's find out what do you think? Why is he lying to you? Okay, everybody, stay right in this area here. Cause I'm gonna pop her in the face. <laughs> Look at girl. I need, I need some cushion because when I hit him, it's gonna hurt my hand. I'm not even break my knuckle. Right. Hey, I never been here before. Girl. Face. All right. Anyway, obviously, uh, we never know what's going to happen. Uh, we thought they were coming over here. They're en route somewhere. We're not quite sure where, you, where they're at. Our detectives are on them. Uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it here. Um, I know you were telling me something just a, just a little bit ago. And, uh, you know, I'm here making myself look like a fool on national TV, you know, to see what I had to see, but you showed it to me. I don't need to go no further, you know what I mean? It's time for me to go on. And you know what? Being here tonight just made me realize that, you know what? No matter what happens, for me to just be strong and keep on going. Are you going, are you going to confront him tonight? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Gonna I'm going to go have a couple of drinks, and I'm going to go wait for her where the girl lives. I know where she is. I know who she is. Come on, baby girl. Let's go find that. You did the right thing, okay? You did the right thing. Put up there. Put up there. I'm going to open the door. Yeah. Y'all be very careful tonight, okay? She's going to whoop them. Okay, girls. There you have it. It's uh, not all these end up exactly how we want them to, or exactly how they should turn out. Coming up, the conclusion. You okay? Yeah, I'm just nervous. I know. Do you have any questions for us or anything? No, just want to get this over with now. Okay. Christina, is Caesar here? Yeah, come in. I don't think you would want me to come in. I just came to return some stuff. Oh, hold here. on. Um, want to return it, and you know I don't want to see you tomorrow. Hey, what's up, bro? 
What's up, dude? What's up? What's up? Look, there's your cologne. Yo. You know, you know who the Caesar. You know. Show cheaters. You want your cologne and, uh, back? There it is, Caesar. There it is. Today you come over and you me and think everything's okay. Now she knows what type of man you are. Now what Mindy and everybody said you Whatever. were. Cheater. Oh, then why are you with me and you're here with her, living here with her, oh, cheating? Yeah, yeah, you do, Caesar. I need to get out of here, man. Yeah, you do know of what I'm talking about, Caesar. No, I don't. Yeah, yeah, you do. I need to get away, man. Yeah, you do. So why are you denying it, Caesar? You why are you were, denying you were it, telling Caesar? Her that, uh, why? <laughs> Go, Caesar. Let her know you're a cheater, Caesar. Now she can have your stupid that's okay you don't today i don't you this was the last caesar i just wanted to come return your now she can have your cheating because i don't want you no more don't come visit me don't call me no more don't do nothing caesar nothing at all and i'm not lying she'll find out for herself that you're nothing but a lying cheater tell her to talk to mindy and margaret they'll tell her to stupid come over to my house today and say you don't know nothing we can go this way I swear it. This is it. This is it. This is it. He's gone. <laughs> you know and I know he went to the house today and he's denying it. And How do you want to handle it? It's over. There's uh, This is it. He knows now that I'm not playing. He knows now. He you know I'm... I can breathe now. I can breathe. <laughs> Maybe he won't keep coming and knocking Yeah, now he, you he has no room to come, come over. I'm done already messed up his relationship here, you know, whatever he had. Now at least I can say that she knows that he's a cheater. He's been lying and to you all He's the been time. lying. He's, he's lied to her. He's been cheating on her with me. You know, no telling who else he's been cheating with. He's just... Now it's it's finally out. Now all the women know what type of man he is, and I'm glad this is my way now. This is my way. I done got even with all the cheating and lies he's done. This is it. This is it. Well, for you, that's the important thing, is that you got this off your chest and you straightened it out with him, and uh, now you can go on and do what you need to do. All right. Following the confrontation, Christina's heartache gradually subsides. At the end of the show, Cheaters finds out if Christina's belief in marriage has been shaken. But now, Cheaters presents Carrie Clausen. Carrie returns to discuss how the actions taken by her fiance, Oscar, have benefited their relationship. Carrie Clausen, age 28. Carrie shares her thoughts on the ordeal she underwent on Cheaters when confronted by her fiance, Oscar. When I first saw the crew, um, I, I really nearly had a heart attack. I was, I was really mad at first, you know. It was like I really felt that we could have settled this on a different level. Like my privacy was completely invaded. Um, I felt bad for Linda too. I didn't want her to be drawn into this whole, you know, shenanigans that was going on. Even though she was a major part of why I was there. But um, I just felt that Oscar could have gone about it a different way. You know, it was extremely embarrassing standing there. Carrie, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you explain to Oscar what you're doing? I'm hanging out with my friend. Okay. You're hanging out with your friend? I saw the I saw the video. Don't your friend. What do you mean your what are you friend? Talking about? What do you mean? I saw video. what happened on the video. Who are all these people? They've been watching you for days. Days. Yeah, yeah, oh, what? Yes, yeah, I saw it all. This was definitely my first experience with a woman uh, to that extent. I mean, obviously in high school you experiment a little bit, but nothing, nothing crazy. I think the average, and the average that any teenager does, you know. But this was definitely the furthest I went. I mean, I, I, and I don't really regret it. I wouldn't tell Oscar that, but. It was, you know, it opened my eyes a little bit. And also, you know, it helped in the long run. It made him appreciate me more, so. This is what? so embarrassing. 
embarrassing. I can't believe you're doing this right now. Well, how do you think I feel? Okay, can we like walk Nothing away? Nothing happened. Huh? To, like have this whole. Park. No, why don't you walk why away? You, you walk, walk away. away. Why I don't know. Your... Business. My business is. Excuse me. My my own business. I saw you, nasty. Uh, yeah, well, well, All right. Like, why can't you talk like a human being? You gotta bring this whole. Because this is how I had to find out. Find this out is how what? I had to find out. Find out you stay away. You get away from me. I don't no, know you. I don't want to know you. Friends away. I don't want to know who the hell you are. What? Where the? You're disgusting. Both of you. I can't. I can't do this right now. I can't believe you're doing this. If I was placed in the same situation as I was, um, I don't think I would do it again. Um, I think our relationship has grown a lot more. Um, I'm, the communication level is a lot better. He's definitely paying more attention to me, and like we, we talk a lot more. It's great, you know. I think the way I went about it with Linda, that was that was wrong, and I think it's much more important to keep these kind of things between two people. It's uh, all about communication. What do you think I've been doing? Her. I saw, you know, we hung out a few times. I, things started happening. I mean, nothing, nothing happened. Nothing happened. Nothing like that, but... All know? these years I've been at work, I meet models, I meet everybody, and what I haven't done anything, anything, not once, to betray you. And look at you, you're betraying me right nothing now. Happened, you, I you just, God, I'm not I am not gay. I'm not gay. Oh. I, I love you. Well the video says different. Oscar and I today are fantastic. I'm like the happiest I've ever been. And I know he's 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 just great. He's feeling great. He's taking more time off work, which enables us to see each other. He's relaxing, less stressed. We, you know, we basically make time for each other. So it sounds cheesy, but you know, we're really getting to know each other all over again. Um, we're very happy. It's great. For more information on these and other cases, log on to cheaters.com. Christina Ramirez is still in a relationship with Cesar Moncada. Not as his fiance, but now as the other woman. While Moncada has chosen to maintain relationships with both Christina and his companion, Christina has laid new ground rules. This time around, Christina believes that by being the other woman, she spares herself the risk of pain and anguish from a meaningful relationship, and no longer worries about Moncada's future philandering. It is unclear whether Mancada's companion knows that her role with... Oh, yeah, we got it right now. They're in south. I'm tired of the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. <laughs> there they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? Hey, 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 what's up, homie? You can do this to me. Mitch, stop! Ow! Stop! Like, Mitch, stop! You better get right with God. I love you. Real Reality Television has brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Greetings, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for tuning in to this presentation of Cheaters. Please meet Tony Edwards, a man who suspects his longtime girlfriend strings him along while involved with another man. Ready to end any illusions, Tony contacts Cheaters to clear up the quagmire. Tony Edwards, 24 years old. Tony suspects his girlfriend of two years is playing a duet with a music man. I mean, you know, before before we were going out, she was always she was one of those roadie girls, always going out for band guys, and you know, I thought she had changed and everything like that, but it just seems like she's snapping back into her ways, going out with her friends all the time. And just, I guess it just used to be a lot, a lot more open and a lot more of a relationship than it than it is now. It just seems like now it's it just doesn't seem like she's interested anymore. Really? And it kind of got to a point to where it looked like you know I was going to ask her to marry her really strongly thinking about it and but now it just seems like the disinterest is you know, you know I fool myself too just thinking that oh it's all right you know, it'll pass yeah and I hope it will I hope it is just like a phase that will pass but uh, you know every once in a while it gets to the point to where you know like what the hell am I doing here yeah I do love her I love her a whole lot and you know she tells me that she loves me even to this day you know she tells me that she loves me but it's just I don't know you it's feel a little in the tone that yeah. feels a little held back a little bit. It makes me feel two different ways. It makes me feel, it makes me feel good and it makes me feel trusting that she does it. But at the same time, if there's something going on, yeah. 
It makes me feel like I'm, I'm getting played here. You know, I guess, I guess if I did find out she was, which I guess, you know, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think sure. there was a chance that there, she was doing it. And I guess I would, you know, I'd be, I'd be pretty pissed off. You know, I'd have to, I'd have to just let her know, you know, why are you screwing this up? Yeah. Because we got a good, I think we got a good thing going. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Cindy Collins, 23 years old. Collins is suspected of trading time with her boyfriend, Tony, for the lead singer of a rock band for whom she books shows. Day one investigation. Cheaters detectives document Collins leaving her apartment complex, holding hands with a companion in question. Later identified as 25-year-old Dave Howell. Cheaters investigators tail the two to Landry's Seafood Restaurant in Dallas's West End, where they share kisses over catfish and cocktails. On this day, Collins' deception is made worse by the fact that she tells Tony exactly where she'll be, but not with whom she'll be. I have some bad news. Well, what's going on? Um, tonight, can't really go out now. Why not? Well, because my mom just called and my uncle just flew in and they want us to all go out to eat, like just a family thing in the West End at Landry's. Cindy, this is the only night that I'm going to be able to go out. I know, I'm sorry. I just can't, I can't, I can't, I, I never get to see him because he's in town like once a year. Not really, but you know. I you just found this out this afternoon. Yeah, she just called and told me. On day four of the investigation, videotaped surveillance reveals her arrival at and subsequent departure from a local bar with companion Howell. The couple do not seem to mind sharing their private moments in public places. The two are documented kissing and fondling one another in the parking lot. Investigation day six. Cheater's detective score as Collins' purchase in a condom store provides proof positive of her infidelity. Collins has not seen Tony in nearly a week and at this time has no plans to do so. Cheater's investigators rule out the necessity of additional surveillance. After the break, the confrontation. With Cindy's deception clearly evidenced, Cheaters prepares to put an end to Tony's speculations. Faced with undeniable images, Tony must collect himself before he acts. How's uh, your relationship been going since last time we talked? Uh, how's the communication level been? Oh, it's pretty much the same. Really? It always is. I asked her out a couple times, asked her to go out this weekend. Remember I told you that we had plans, I wanted to go out this weekend, but right. that kind of fell through. Um, seems like she's going out of town to visit some friends. I guess I just kind of thought that if, uh, you know, the holiday and everything that we were going to be together. Excuse me one second. Hello? Hey, what's happening? We'll just do it. I have Tony here, so you guys, we're going to have to move and move pretty quick. Tony? I'm free all weekend now, man, so <laughs> I'm in your hands. We're, we're going to make a run up to Oklahoma. So uh, we're going to be a little jaunt to Oklahoma City, did you? Yeah, but like I said before, I'm planning on going out of town this weekend, so I guess here it is. Yeah. All right. Come on over. She has been seeing someone else. As you imagine, uh, the facts are as he is in a band and he's playing here in Oklahoma City tonight. I have some surveillance footage on my laptop if you'd like to see. Here they are together again. It just gets better. Um, this is a little tougher. She, um, I don't know if y'all practice safe sex. We have him at a condom store called Condom Sense, I believe is, was the name of it. Actually purchasing some, I don't know how freaky you guys get, but he was purchasing some some interesting items we didn't catch it all but uh i know that there were some condoms purchased and 
and a few other items. She was with her girlfriend here at that point. Uh, this was at one of his concerts. This is a fella here. And then we have them after the show. They got together here. And that was it. Like I said, I hate to uh, to show it to you that way, but uh, that's why you brought us in. Yep. They are here in Oklahoma City. Are we going to get to see him? He's playing. The question is, do you want to see him? Yeah, I do. Do you want to confront him? Yeah, I do. On national television now, we have the whole world here. Hey, man, I'm not world here. I want her to be embarrassed. I want yeah. her to be humiliated. I mean, I can see it in your eyes. You definitely hurts. Y'all, we all were together how long? Uh, almost two years. Really? How does that make you feel? Half of me knew it all along. I mean, or I wouldn't have come to you guys in the first place, but you know, half of me didn't, but I'm just, just going to let that first half take over tonight. Yeah. We're ready to go. We've got a call. Did he call? Yes. He's on, they're together? Yes, he has something. Okay. They are together. Are they close? Do we have a long way to go? Uh, it is about 10 minutes away. Oh, good. Okay. Let's go. All right. Let's get it done. Are you all right? Yeah. Yeah. I want to get it done. I want to do this thing. Right here. Hotel. It's management. What up? Hey, what's we're up? In, we're in. Come on, get in there. Hey, what's up? Hey, what's up? Hey, 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 Get out of here. Come on, Sydney. Get in. Uh -huh. hey, no, come we're on. We're from Cheaters hey, TV. We've got to ask you some questions. Hey, hey, hey. Get out. What's going on here? Hey, man. Hey, you look. Hey, you look. Hey. Hey, guys. Hey. Easy, easy. easy. We'd like to ask you. We'd like to ask you. Get out of my face. Look. What the hell is going on? What the hell is going on? What are you doing up here? Did you know she was in a relationship with him? Did you know they were you know together for two years? Yeah. Two years. That's all right. Do what now? Okay, you know they've been okay, together let's, for let's, two let's years. Let's go down the list. I'm gonna go to West End. They've been together for two years. Yeah, right. To visit your family. Can you go to West End? Visit Get everybody you know out of here. If you no. want to talk to me, you can talk no. to me. No. No. no, you know why? She says nothing is. What is this? They've been oh together gosh. for two years, and she's been lying right? to him, telling him that uh, yeah. that she was no. going out with her girlfriend. You're gonna be on these cameras, right? We have video of you guys together. Ridiculous. Coming up, the conclusion. West End? Going to West End with your family? Oh, with Chump Boy here, okay? You're never Going. around, Tony. It's like a nice damn job here. Hey, hey, hey. Oh, dude. No, listen, you come all the way to Oklahoma City to cheat on me in my car? In my car? Man. Dude, don't even touch me again. I swear don't, to God, don't. don't. Quit. What? Is this true? Let's quit. Is this true? Yeah, it's true. We've been going out for two years. You want to explain yourself? We have video. I have of you nothing and him to explain together. to any of you people. Why? Because I, I don't know who people are. It's no, a this joke is insane. TV. This is insane. You know what this is? I'll tell you what this is, Cindy. It's Everybody Cheaters TV. Cheaters. That's what it is. Oh, Cheaters TV. Yeah, it sounds really dorky, whatever. You know what? But you know what? Now, all the world, your family, everybody, your friends, is going to know what you what are. What do you think about the you. excuse me? Uh -uh. You, Cindy. you and him. Whoa. Okay. Hey, well, you know what, Cindy? Where's my keys to my car? Yeah, it's one thing. How does that make you feel? Where's You've my been, keys? She's been with him for two years. Yeah. How long have you guys been together? We should even care. I mean, why should I even talk to any of y'all? Why? I mean, well, it's got to be a problem, obviously. She's why, been dating why? this guy, dating you two times in well, I'm not talking to you about here. Where are you going? I don't know if we can go somewhere and talk. I'm not talking here. I'm not Where talking here. I'm not talking in front of these people here. You've been I think this is a good place to talk. I think we're going to talk right here. No, what is this? Listen, I have nothing to say to you. I don't know who the hell any of you people are, and this is so crazy. Where are you going, Cindy? I got the keys. Okay, well, give me the keys. No. Okay, I'm leaving. It's my car. I know. I'm going home. Do you want do you want to work this out with any of these guys? Who are you with? Who do you, who do you care about? Why, Cindy? Why? This is ridiculous. You guys just come huh? here with all. You come all the way up here just to do anything. Like that. Have we had problems? 
We haven't had that many problems. All right? Maybe just help him out and explain why. I don't know why, and I don't want to talk to you any of you guys. Is this so to you? I mean, y'all y'all had two years together. How long have you been dating? Uh, what's what's his name? Not that long, Dave. Not that long. So you were dating him now? You want to know about that too, then? If you want to talk, uh, well, we'll well talk I, I know about the toys that you bought him. I've got all that on videotape with you and Mary. Just <laughs> great. And how long have you been following me around? For a little while. Okay. Well, let's he go. really cared about you, and he was. And I care problems. about him too, but I don't ever see him that much anymore. He's always working, and I. Have I ever lied to you? I not that I know. You know, in the past three or four days, I've recorded phone calls from each from you. And you know what? I've got three lies on tape from you. Number one, I'm going shopping with Mary. Well, that wasn't really a lie, but you were going shopping for sex toys, and they weren't for me. Number two, I'm going to West End with my family. And number three, I'm going to Oklahoma to visit my friend Amy. Do you care about Tony? Boyfriend's yeah, gone. I don't, care about Tony. I don't care. Why were you screwing around on him? Was it something? Is it, is it him? Did he I do don't something? No, 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 okay. You know, all you have to do is come and talk to me about when something's wrong. Well, let's go talk. Let's go. Okay. Well, I'm leaving. So if you're coming with me, then. Let's I'm out Tony, of here. You wanna, you wanna, you I want to. I want to get back to Dallas so we can sort this thing out right. Would you? Would you actually try to make it work with Tony? Yes, I'll try. I've got to. Are you? Or is yeah, this guy? I'm gonna try. I've been with him for a long time. I might as well try. Okay, so. Can we go now? Can, do you have enough? Can everybody on my face now? Let's go. Really, I hear you, Tony. Uh, yeah. You all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Come on, I'll take that off of you. You all right? Yeah. I just want to get out of here and get back to Dallas. I'm not going to be restrained up here. I can see you still care. I do care. I wouldn't have done this if I didn't care. Yeah. You guys, thank you very much. I'm going home now. Thank you. Well, Tony, be careful, buddy. I will. I'll talk to you. Are you all right? You okay with this? You have anything else you want to say? Okay. Back that up, please. With the confrontation behind him, Tony comes to many important decisions. At the end of this program, Cheater shares Tony's final thoughts. But next, Cheaters presents Charles Nikolov. Charles shares his feelings on relationships and how his bond with Chloe Swain went astray. Charles Nikolov, age 35. Charles takes responsibility for initiating the actions taken by his former girlfriend, Chloe. I had no idea what was going on. Um, felt like the paparazzi was after me. I thought maybe they thought I was famous or something. And then I heard Chloe calling my name and my heart just almost stopped because I knew it was probably not something good that was about to happen. What do you think you're doing? What? What is going on? Charles, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Can you explain to Chloe? What? what are you doing with this young lady? I saw everything. How did, what do you mean you saw everything? Well, we know that every you time you me. walk the dogs, you meet I, this young lady. I yes. just ran into What, am I under arrest? Why would you have me you follow around? You are so lucky around? you're out. No. You gonna cry for me to come back? Is this how you fix the relationship? Baby, come on. Huh? Baby, is this how on. you fix the relationship, you other girls? I don't know if you heard her saying she was gonna throw my stuff out on the street and kick me out. Well, that's exactly what she did. I tried to, um, reconcile with her that night and found found most of my stuff um, clothing all my possessions out in the street um, I wish she wouldn't have done that uh, but um, she did and um, you know things are a little tough for me right now but uh, fortunately for me um, Heidi's a very understanding girl and um, I do think that um, I've turned a new leaf. Does she have a nice apartment you could go to? I hope so. Because you're not seeing these dogs again and you're not coming home with I me again. Do you understand? 
I'm not the one that's crazy. Remember, you thought I was crazy. I'm not the one well, that's you crazy. Are, obviously. No, I mean, I'm you're not. You're crazy right out here. No, I'm not. What's going on right now? What's going, What's going on, on right now? now? Is that I finally right now? am justified that you are the one that has been telling me I'm crazy and making me crazy by he making me umbrella. seem paranoid. I'm not paranoid. You you're someone minutes. else. Chloe, I just want to tell you that um, we spent a lot of great time together, and. Um, I still love you as a friend, and I hope that you find a great guy and you have a great life with him, because you definitely deserve it. And um, I realized that it was my it was my actions that made you act irrational, and I don't I don't blame you for that. I would have beat myself up, and um, so just. I just hope you you find love and that you um, and that you're doing good. After Tony Edwards confronted Collins, he ended his two-year relationship with her and immersed himself in his work with marketing and promotions. While Tony has not yet found a new relationship with which to share the future, he refuses to discuss the past and has no further comment regarding his ex. Currently, Collins remains in an exclusive relationship with Dave Howell. Despite the fact that Howell was also misled by Collins, he has both forgiven and forgotten Collins' reckless way. Tired of the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. <laughs> there they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? Hey, 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 Please meet Jacob Hamilton, a newlywed who suspects that his wife cannot shake the single life. Desperate to regain the equity that once existed in their relationship, Jacob approaches cheaters to investigate the matter. Jacob Hamilton, age 22, an administrative assistant who believes his new wife is skating around the truth. I felt like I was the king of the world. I mean, you don't feel any. I can't really describe the feeling. It's something more I guess you'd have to feel. She gave you that, didn't she? Yes, she did. You've been married how long? I've been married six months now. So I took her to Reunion Tower, and then we went, uh, we went up uh, on the, where you look out over Dallas, and I proposed to her up there. Wow. And she cried. She cried for five or 10 minutes. I can feel the, the difference a little bit in her attitude. It feels like mentally around me, she's kind of a little distant. And, and the lies, really, you know? We really base something on never lying to each other, kind of kind of keeping it, you know, honest with each other. And I was, right. you know, I was looking for, for that forever, maybe. Maybe maybe she's someplace else. Really? Not, now she hasn't lost any of her, you know, maybe passion. I don't know how to put that. That's still there, but it's like mentally talking with me. I mean, it's just, you know, it's not there. It hurts to even think about, I can't, you know? I can't, I can't fathom my wife maybe not being loyal to me. It, it tears me up, I, you know, just to, I don't, I don't want to think about it. Yeah. And you know, I hold her and I go to sleep, but, but you know, I don't really go to sleep inside. You think about things, you wonder, maybe someone else, you know, it just hurts. I, I'd like some answers yeah. to the lies that I know are there. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Elizabeth Hamilton, age 19, a daycare worker who is suspected of sneaking out with another instead of tending to the kids and her husband. Investigation day one. It doesn't take long to find out that Jacob's intuition is on target. After only 30 minutes on the job, Cheater's detectives catch Mrs. Hamilton leaving work to have lunch with an unknown male. 
later identified as Nathan Skupka. At lunch, the couple sit side by side, appearing cozier than merely friendly, especially considering that the suspect turned down her husband's invitation to take her to lunch the same day. Hey, baby. Hey, sweetie. How are you? I'm oh, pretty good. All right. I miss you. I miss you too, baby. You want me to come get you for lunch today? No, well, actually, I have to wash my nap room, so I'm just going to take a short break and go get food and come back. Oh. Yeah. I know, baby. I'm sorry. Okay. I love you. I love you too. See you later. Investigation day seven. After another luncheon with her new companion, Mrs. Hamilton walks with him to her car. Jacob's worst fears come to life as his wife and Skafka exchange a kiss before she departs. Investigation day 14. On the final day of investigation, neither rain nor storm can stop the two luncheon lovers from another rendezvous yet at Skafka's apartment. Mrs. Hamilton's chivalrous companion gently puts his arm around her and leads her inside. Two hours later, she finally emerges from Skafka's apartment. Case closed. After the break, the confrontation. With Elizabeth's shameful exploits clearly documented, Cheaters tracks down Jacob to disclose the state of his marriage. Jacob attempts to quiet his rattled emotions as he studies the surveillance. We got the footage of her uh, that is in a compromising position. Now I'm gonna roll some footage here. Here she is. This was day one that we caught them together. This is outside her work. Now, this was her minivan. Right. Here they are, same day, going to have lunch. Okay. Do you recognize this guy? Can you see it? Yeah, I can, can see Can you see it. him? Yeah. The only thing strange is they're sitting on the same side of the table if they were just friends. That's a little odd, okay? Yeah. And that was the first red flag that came up. This is the third day that we caught them together. Uh, this is what disturbed me as well because he actually kisses her here as when she gets in the car. Yeah, that, I hate to have to, to give it to you that way. Here she is meeting back up with him. It's raining outside and cold. Now that's five days out of 14, okay? Mm -hmm. And then they're going back into his garage apartment and here they are now leaving. On this day, my records show that they were in there for a couple hours at his house. All right, now listen. As I told you before, my detective is following your wife. Mm -hmm. And we thought that this may go down today, that they may be, they may be hooking up together today. Mm -hmm. Now, he doesn't live very far from here. Okay and she is on her way this direction. We believe that she is going over to his house today. Okay. The yep. question is, do you want to yeah. confront her? Do you want to talk to her about what she's doing? Yeah, definitely. Coming up on the side of her? I don't know. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, she's right in, the, in the truck. She's in the truck. Yeah. Hang on. Right here? Yeah, I'm blocking. One second, one second. One second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. You didn't look locked. Open this door. What are you doing, baby? What's going on, honey? What's going on, baby? Well, who the is this? Huh? What are you? A friend of yours? What is this? I've seen pictures of you. I you what? What are you doing with my wife? You know what I'm saying? That's your wife. No. Man. You know what I'm saying? Why did you tell me? You don't talk to my wife. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? You right now. Slow down, Jacob, one second. I Would you like to explain to your Maybe. husband what you've been doing? He's a friend of mine. He's a friend of yours that you go ice skating with and you tell me you're staying at your job with. Get in the car, Maybe. man. Let's go. No, this is my husband. I'm telling you. What I'm going to tell you. Did you know she was married? No. What no. has she been telling you? She didn't tell me anything. She just come on to me, you know? 
Whatever. You want to leave with that? No, shit. I'm going. Whatever, you know. Please. what? I'm sorry. Sorry for what? Going out Please with him? So why do you got to lie to me when you go out with him all the time? Why are you got to go out with somebody when you're married? What does it look like? Uh, no? You go to his house? You stay in his house? So what are you, gonna you go do? ice skating? I'm getting out here now. Not too much. We were just hanging out. I'm getting it. Sorry, brother. Do you want to talk for a second? No. Is there, is there anything to say? No, I mean, you know, you're going to go out with him? You're going to go eat lunch with him and lie to me about it? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I didn't want to tell you. You don't want to tell me. Of course you don't want to tell me. I wish I could go out with women all day and have lunch. Sleeping together? No. You hadn't slept together? No. What have y'all been doing? I, we have footage of her at your house for hours at a time. Yeah, but that doesn't mean anything. I mean, does it? Really? You know, I mean. I'm cool now. I'm sorry. You didn't do nothing. I got, I got tapes somewhere of you going to his house. Going ice skating, baby? He's a friend of mine. So, so you lie to me to go ice skating and to go I to his house? I think I was cheating on you. Well, what's it like? You're not cheating on me? She came up to me and said hi and, you know, whatever. And I was like, you know, I was real friendly back. You know, when a beautiful woman talks to you, you know, you, you, you want to talk back to them, especially if you're single like me. Why were you lying to your husband, telling him that, that you couldn't go have lunch with him and when you were with this other gentleman? Because if I told him I was going to go hang out with him, then he'd think I was cheating on him. I have surveillance footage of him I kissing you. I have never touched that guy. I haven't You were hugging him. and holding his hand. I Do you think that's him. right? I did hug him. Did you I, kiss him? I don't think it's right. I haven't kissed him. I don't think it's really? right. I'm sorry. We had something going on, you know. I mean, we didn't have, like, that serious of a relationship. We're not married or anything. I'm married. Coming up, the conclusion. I know about this. You going out, you lying to me on the phone? Over Christmas. It's Christmas. Merry Christmas. I love you. Merry Christmas. You realize? I love you with all of my heart. I am very sorry. You realize what that did to him when I had to show him footage of you ice skating, holding hands with another man? I'm sorry. Please forgive me. He's a friend. Please, you're my husband. He's a friend that ain't gonna be around. He's so what are you seeing him? Where'd you meet him? Why are you even talking to him? I went to high school with him. Why are you talking to him? He just started calling me again. So why'd you start talking to him? I don't know. I'm sorry. What would you do if you saw him with another You'd woman? Leave me. You'd leave me. Is there any, was there any message you'd like for me to relate for you on your behalf? Just tell her it's over, man. It's through. Okay, you don't want to see her anymore? No. Okay. I swear to God that I have never touched him in any kind of way like that. You kissed him on film. I have video footage of you kissing him. I see video footage, you know what I'm saying? You kissed him. It's friendly, okay? A friendly kiss. Maybe. I mean, have you kissed me friendly before? Maybe. Please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, baby. I love you. Why'd you do this to me? Do you want us to stay together? I love you with all my heart. Why did you do this to me? Oh, I'm sorry. You're the only person I love. Why did you do this to me? I had to call these people because you lie to me all the time. And you would tell me the truth. I'm sorry. Yeah, they're just too loud. 
I'm trying to get through this right now. They, they just need some time. How are you doing, buddy? All right. I know it's tough. You know what you had to go through. It's been unbelievable. I'm so sorry. I don't know if I can forgive Please you. Forgive me. I'm not gonna forgive you right now. Please. You went out with this other man. You know what I'm saying? You, it's nothing. Well, cool. I'm gonna go out with some girl I meet at the club tonight, and it's nothing. And we're gonna go to lunch, and we're gonna go ice skating. What? I'm sorry. I love you so much. It's okay, baby. I love you so much. It's okay, baby. It's okay. Why don't we? jump up in the truck for a minute okay it's a little warmer yeah. uh, your friend left you so um, we'll make sure that she gets wherever she needs to get with one of our detectives okay. if you want her to come with you if y'all want to go back I don't know whatever you want to do we'll make it happen for you um, we have where's our car it's in his house it's in his house, it's in his house. Um, that should probably be a priority. We should get the car. Do you want her to ride with us, or do you want to? I want her. I want her. You yeah. want to? Okay. I know you love her, and you guys, I'm, the key is we need to make sure that you feel that. After the confrontation, Jacob tries to rid himself of the video images scorched into his subconscious. Coming up, Cheaters finds out whether Jacob's marriage will endure. But now, Cheaters introduces Jennifer Peterson. Jennifer returns with a fresh new perspective on the McGinnis case. Jennifer Peterson, age 33. Jennifer describes how her experience on Cheaters has caused her to take a more cautious approach to dating. I was flabbergasted. I didn't know what the heck was going on. It kind of threw me for a loop. And I, I, I knew by Chris's face and actions that it kind of threw him for a loop, too. Oh, my God. Say, punk, is she? Can you get out of the car and let me holler at you? You can get out, too. Chris, I'm Tommy from the TV show Cheaters. You know who we are? You want to explain what you've been doing? I regret some of the actions that I took on that day. Um, not necessarily just for the screaming and yelling and the violence, but also to put myself in a predicament, uh, being of service to someone who I didn't know all that well. Uh, you told me you broke up with Are you gonna tell her? So. You're sorry? Oh, you were sorry earlier too, and I wanna know who she is and where she, where's she from, where you know her from? You work with her? Oh, you don't? Where where do you know her from? Another club. Oh, where does he pick you up from when y'all going to have little um, lunch breaks and eat Chris. and, you know? Yeah, what, about? what about what? You can have them. That was it, as far as Chris went. He was out of my life and he was done for good. And the two of them, honestly, I could care less what happened between the two of them. But knowing her actions and her response to what had happened between us, then I'm sure that there was no way in heck that they would be getting back together either. Yeah. You just needed the truth, that's... man. You should have stepped up like a man and was honest man. with her. Young lady, I hope, that, uh, I hope that you learned something here today too. You need to find someone who that you're not only attracted to, but somebody who you can talk to about anything at any time uh, to have someone who is there for you and cares very deeply for you that you also care very deeply about. Relationships are friendships that are taken to the next level.
Jacob Hamilton has chosen to forgive his wife for her yet-to-be-admitted betrayal and intends to work hard to save their floundering marriage. Together, they're considering counseling as a means of sorting through their differences and moving on with their lives together. For his part, companion Skufka would like to forget about the incident entirely. He continues to maintain that he had no knowledge of Mrs. Hamilton's marital status, that they are not friends from high school, and that their sexual relationship... Oh, yeah, we got it right now. They're heading south. I'm tired of the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. There they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? God. I love you. Real Reality Television is brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Greetings. I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for tuning in to another installment of Cheaters. Please meet Donna James, a loving wife who suspects that the lack of communication in her marriage may be a sign of infidelity. Concerned about the declining intimacy in her life, Donna approaches Cheaters to investigate the matter. Donna James, age 44, a homemaker who suspects her husband is handy with more than just odd jobs around the neighborhood. You've been married how long? Since 86. Since 86. And your husband's name? Clarence. They call him Skeet. Skeet. He was real good for a while, and then he started acting like the old ways. In what way? What is that? What's Disappearing. He He'll go out and take the trash out and not be back for two or three hours. You look around, he's nowhere in the yard. Was he telling you then that he loved you? Yeah, but I should have known. I knew him too long. Really? Well, he cheated on his first wife. It was just, I walked in. I mean, I didn't catch him in bed or nothing like that, but it was obvious. Where were they? At yeah, his mother's. Have you confronted him about your feelings right now? Oh, yeah. It's my imagination. So he's saying nothing's going on? Nothing's going on. It's all my imagination. Today, does he tell you that he loves you? Uh-huh. You're the only one? Oh, yeah. How does he say that? What's he say? Yeah, he'll tell me he loves me. You know I would never cheat on you again. I'll go, okay. It hurts. He's got a lot of kids in jeopardy with this. Yeah. And then he's got grandkids. So you're really doing this because the kids and the family. But I want proof. That's what's important to you. He's always got away with it before because I could never prove it. It hurts, doesn't it? Yep, we're going to prove it this time. What are you going to do if we bring you a positive finding? I'm going to let him the rest of his life a live in hell. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Clarence Skeet Aldrich, age 44. A grease monkey who seems to be handy with more than just cars. Investigation day one. Cheaters detectives move into action. Donna is wired for sound to document whatever Aldrich says. Aldrich heads over to his mother's home after he tells his wife he's going to take out the trash. Aldrich then enters the home and remains inside for some time. Cheater surveillance cameras patiently wait outside for any clues as to his conduct inside. 45 minutes later, Aldrich and a female emerge from the home. Certainly, the companion is not his mother. As Cheaters learns, she is actually a close relative and less than half his age to boot. Cheaters cameras capture the two hugging in the front lawn before saying goodbye. Arguably, this is not an avuncular embrace. It is plausible that something incestuous is going on behind closed doors. Investigation day two. The following day, Aldrich tells Donna that he's going to the store, but Cheater's snoops once again capture the suspect driving over to his mother's house, presumably to rendezvous with the young companion. Upon his arrival, Aldrich spends another suspicious hour inside. Donna captures his false alibi on tape. I'm about to say, I'm 45 years old, I ain't got a mama. You know? Matter of fact, I think I'll be walking to the store again. I'm 
big walk store again. No, Dr. Pepper this time. Uh, I'll see you later. I'm going to go. Bye. Way back about 20 minutes. When Aldrich finally emerges, his companion once again comes out to affectionately say goodbye. Investigation day four. For the fourth consecutive day, cheater surveillance catches Aldrich meeting up with his companion at his mother's home. This time, they get into a vehicle and drive to a local gas station, contradicting Aldrich's claim that he's going to get groceries. When Aldrich returns to his mother's, the two retreat inside for another 45 minutes of privacy, revealing the smoke, but not the fire. Cheaters advises Donna of the circumstances. After the break, the confrontation. With Skeet's disturbing indiscretions captured on video, Cheaters connects with the distraught Donna to deliver the undeniable proof. Donna believes Skeet may be up to no good, but nothing could prepare her for the truth. Tell me what uh, you said you just ran him off. I went work on a car and screwdriver. driver. That's all he had with him? He didn't have that. Uh, really? He had a sack. He had a bag with him. Yeah. Well, we followed him uh, going over to a parts store and then coming out, coming back here, and he had something in a bag and he... Yeah, he had a sack we left here. He told you he was going to go work on a car? Yeah, and he got a toolbox with him. What'd you say to him? I run him off. What'd you tell him? I told him, I ain't no idiot. You didn't believe he was going to work on a car? Take my first rodeo with him. Really? But it might be the last one when I catch him. We were able to get some footage and I think it was important that you see this footage. Uh -huh. This is the first day of surveillance that we had on him. This was when he told you he was gonna take out the trash. <laughs> he went over to his mother's house. And this is the woman that, that he met at your mother's house. This is his niece. This is his niece. She's half his age. Okay. Well, I used to adopt her. This was another day that we procured information from you that he was going to work and here he is with her again the times we were catching him was when they would take the dog out for a walk here he is leaving in my car. he would always go in his mother's house with her for 45 minutes to two hours on this day was the exact same now every day we caught him going over there there wasn't a day that we missed him going over there now here's another day he was going to pick you up some groceries. Now, he picked her up. <laughs> That's a big pack of groceries, wasn't it? Here they were holding hands. Not normally what you would think the behavior of a, a guy and his niece yeah. would be carrying on. Now, he does take her back to her house or his mother's house, and he goes in for about 45 minutes. Now, I wouldn't think it was strange that he would be spending time with his niece over at his mother's, but I would think it's strange that he's not telling you that he's doing that. Is he over there? He is over there right now. Let's go. Yeah. You want to talk to him? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's pretty sad. He's so old, you got to help him down the road. Ain't got nothing to say to y'all. Yeah. I don't know which dog you walking, is what I want to know. Which dog, which dog you walking, Clarence? Huh? What dog you walking? Two-legged or four-legged? Clarence, huh? you want to explain? My name's Tommy Grant from Where's the TV the show you're Cheaters. On? I just been over there working on a dude's car, man. Walking Damn car, ain't nobody on a car at the house. Well, I've been working on the car. What car? At the house. What car? At the house. If, if you know how to work on a car, they ain't gonna be sitting there for a year. <laughs> Can you explain why you've been lying to your wife? And why you're working on a car when you're Why your niece over is here? half your age and I used to change your diapers? Is this your niece? Yes, sir. <laughs> Have you been having relations with, with your niece? No, Y'all just walking and holding hands? No. Is there any reason you've been telling your wife you're going to work or going to take out the garbage when we've been <laughs> yeah, he's following taking you? taking the garbage out, all right. Coming up, the conclusion. Oh, he ain't gonna let me catch that. Can you, right, can you explain right it? Yeah, you better watch it, honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's it. Yeah, since 1986. We've been watching you for two weeks. We've never seen you work on a car yet. No, you got a car. I haven't oh, seen please. you touch one yet. I want the parts out. Where's the toe box? Where's the toe box? 
So I'd walk the dog. Where's toe box? You did? You can't walk it. And you got to hold her hand? Hey. <laughs> and you're so stupid, you, you ain't let go yet. You know how Oh, dear man. Yeah. This is your wife and I you're holding her hand. Are you, you, got. you should be ashamed of yourself. For the love of God, man, here's your wife. Hey, you don't know what's happening between me and her. Nothing. You, you know, cheated on her at this house 10 years ago. No, I, 10 years ago. That's the past. Uh, now what is this? It. What's going on now? Yeah. Sucker, you just told on yourself. Why don't you ever tell her you're coming to see your mom or to <laughs> see your niece? <laughs> Why aren't you honest with her? Can you explain that? You can't even spell honest. How come you've never said that you're coming over here? She knows where I'm going. She knows exactly where I'm going. When you say, so Rich do you know where she's going? Do you know, where, she, you know, where, going? Do you know you where he's, where he's going? Does he ever tell you that he's coming over here? I'll be back to the house in a minute. You hope. If I'm not, I'm not. Yeah. I'll be back in a minute. Watch the bonfire out front. Yeah. You'll Let find me it. ask you one question. Do you love your wife? Yeah, I love her. Well, what, do you see what you're doing love, right now? Hate. I sure hope you don't ever hate me. Hey, don't let, what? Me walking my niece to the store and back. This is sick, Skeet. It looks pretty bad, Skeet. No. It's sick. It's you're sick. Matter which side you're looking at. Yeah, well, I'm on this side, the right side of the street. Which side are you on? Like I said, I'll be at the house in a minute. You're right. So you're telling us that nothing's been going on. He's lying. That this usual. activity is okay. What part uh, of the car are you Deceiving your on? wife. Show me where you're working on the car. Where? What is, she ain't gonna talk. She's half his age. Don't, don't you feel ashamed? What's going on? Like big girls, He's lying okay. to his wife, coming to see you. I mean, I have surveillance of you guys holding hands and hugging. And yeah. I don't think so. I know so. I have it on film. I, don't think I know so. You want I me to show it. it to you? You want to see it? Like I said, I'll be home in a minute. Yeah, I know. You gonna watch VCR all night too? Of you don't want to explain yourself. You're just going to walk away from your wife like this. That's what he's been doing since 1986, walking away. I'll be home in a minute. Yeah. Here's your minute. Are you going to leave or I'm going to call the police? So just go ahead and leave. Now try to take it. I've got my own keys, Don. I've got to help toolbox out yeah, the car. Yeah, I know. You don't need your own toolbox in the pawn shop. I've got to help toolbox out the car. Yeah, you don't have a car. Yeah, I do. Go over and say. I've got keys to it in my pocket. You don't have a car. There's, you might have a ski, but there's nothing parked there. I've got keys well, okay, to the see car. if there's anything in the driveway. I'm going to drive it. Go stay. You can't stop me driving. Oh, yeah, I can I've stop it. I've got you. a toolbox down. I'm working It's called auto theft. It's in my name. I got the title. I have the title. You're saying you have tools in your car? You don't have, yeah, I want to see them. And what car I got the you got to work on? Does it look like we're here in the driveway? What's wrong with it? Axles out on front of it. <laughs> You're a liar. Have you been working on it for the last, yeah. in the last week? Yeah. You have been? I've been working on it. Yeah. You, want to see you, working, you want to see what you've been working on for a week, Skate? Every day. You want to see what you've been working on? I don't know why you want to be like You want to see what you've been working on? Right you want to see what you've been working on? Right you want to see what you've been working on? Fat girl. I don't see why you want to be like that. And I don't know why you want to do it. With, I have to keep it in the family. That way you're going to cause problems. Yeah. Like I said, I don't know why it, you it looks very Run bad. Run over him. It looks wrong, and when we see it, and when we hear no, the lies. No, that this, ain't all she's this, done. Look, this is the real, you know how the neighborhood is, huh? <laughs> yeah, I know it. You know, you know, it's called spam. So you're saying trash. you have to go with her, holding her hand, so she's you're protecting her in the neighborhood? Be, yeah, she's ain't nobody holding my hand. Ain't nobody holding my hand. You know, One why? There's, there's nothing happening between us. Why ain't you holding my hand? Think I'm going to fall down? Like I said, I'm just going to reach the car and come back and work on it. You ain't touching my car. It's called auto theft. I'm get Try me. I know you ain't taking the car. Now, yeah. just be honest with her. Okay. And and otherwise, it's going to be very difficult to go on. And I'm not going to speak for her, but it's going to be very difficult. And have you been cheating on her? Maybe once or twice. <laughs> okay. Okay. Since you got out? Since I've got out. Okay. He's been out a year. Have you been cheating with your niece? That I'm not going to say. Why? I'll say once or twice. Okay. But not with who? I'll find it out anyway. Well, maybe you will. Well, you it's want. just important. It's, it's important that we talk. And you get this off your chest and you talk about it with her. And that's the only way you're going to be able to go forward. So it's once or twice. I already knew it. I just wanted to hear you say it. Do you want, and you, you want to stay in this marriage? Yeah. Are you willing to see some counseling? Are y'all willing to do something? Because obviously this is wrong. If you're stepping out, there's a problem. Right. Oh, we seen a counselor early this morning. Yeah. Are you willing to talk to somebody? Yeah. The question is, do you want that? Yeah. I ain't wasted 26 years for nothing. Do you love him? It's hard to say. 
There's too many kids involved in this. Do you want to be faithful in this relationship? I've been faithful. I can say For I've met you twice. Okay. You're a that, man. You're I, a man yourself. No, I, that honesty <laughs> from man, me is very important. But That's can you be man. faithful in this relationship? Yeah. Locked up. No. Not Do you want up. to be faithful yeah. in this relationship? We can make it work, like I say. What can we years. do? What can we do to help you? She can make start that treating happen? me like a man. You know, you you have to step up as well. Yeah, I understand that. I didn't see you say it with a straight face. Yeah, like I say, I'm going to the house to get my tool. Yeah, you know, she changed your uh, tune real quick. Take taking no car. I'll take your car. Go ahead, take it. I'll be back in a minute. Take it. How dare you? Okay. Take it. Let's let's get you a ride back, okay? Oh, I ain't worried about him taking that car. After the confrontation, Donna wrestles with Skeet's disquieting relationship with his niece. At the conclusion of this presentation, Cheaters details Donna's plans for the future. But first, Cheaters welcomes Prince Slater. Prince puts aside his anger over the recent events in his life, hoping to gain closure with his former girlfriend, Christine. Prince Slater, age 39, Prince describes the events surrounding the messy confrontation with his girlfriend and his roommate. Now when I look back and I think about five years, man, that's five years of my life is nothing to find out that, you know, it, this is not the right person for me to be with forever. Uh, at the time, I, I just couldn't believe it. You know, I was, for days, I was just devastated. Go, go, go. Chris. I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. You need to get you, get the hell out. Both of you need to pack it and leave now. I mean now! Get your trap ass out of here! Steve and Chris feed off each other. I think they're both uh, one and the same. And, the, you know, maybe that was the attraction for each other. Maybe that's what uh, threw her so off track. And. Um, but from what I what I understand, they're both uh, <laughs> hitting the booze pretty hard on a regular basis. I'm gonna beat the hell out of you! Come on with it, boy! Just beat the hell out of you! Come on! Put this sword down. Don't let it go. Let it go. Put the sword back. Back up. You back up. Come on, buddy. Okay, come on. Come on. What is going on? Well, I'll say this: at least if he had been drinking, he would have an excuse. To, you know, <laughs> being such a screwball. I mean. Who's going to go for a sword, you know, I mean, over something stupid like, you know, that's kind of dramatic, I felt. I don't know, maybe I'll terror, maybe, <laughs> maybe I'll struck a note of terror in him. If you ask <gasps> if I I'm not doing this you, with you. You wanted this conversation. It was a mutual agreement to help this man out. This man goes way back with and, me. And you go leave all the time, go to work, go, go out of town, and leave me to handle things. I got to get away from you. You're you as much at fault as I am. You make me sick. You're as much at fault as I am. It's your friend. Cheaters has done nothing but help me. I would have wasted a lot of years with this lady, um, probably blind to a lot of things that she was, could have or would have or had been doing. Um, cheaters opened my eyes. Donna James and Clarence Aldrich have decided to stay together and work on their 10-year-old marriage. Aldrich finally admitted to infidelity, but would not confirm any feelings for his relative. The young girl is of age, but doesn't speak a word to cheaters and continues to decline interviews. Donna now keeps a close eye on her husband when he leaves the house. Further surveillance shows that Aldrich's visits to his mother's home have nearly ceased, but he still I'm tired of the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. There they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? Hey, Stop! 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 Stop!
Meet Miguel Mendez, a young man experiencing true love for the first time. Fed up with his girlfriend's constantly changing schedule, Miguel contacts cheaters to investigate his concerns. Miguel Mendez, age 20, suspects his girlfriend is spending her lunch breaks with a male companion. Let me ask you why you contacted cheaters. Well, lately, it's been like, I'd pick her up from work, you know, pick her up from work and stuff. And sometimes I'd go and then I'd wait. And, you know, it's like it's past 12 or something, you know, I'm like, she's not here. I'm like, damn, so I, she tells me she gets rides, you know, from a friend. And I'm like, well, you know, from what friend, you know, I'm, I'm the one that picks you up, you know, you're waiting for me most of the time. Have you told her how you felt, that you have a problem with that? I, I've told her, you know, you know, if you're doing that, you know, just let me know if you, know, you don't want to spend time or if you're getting tired of me, you know, let me know something, you know, right. so I can move on or whatever, you know, try to change something. And what does she say? She's like, no, it's, you know, it's cool, I'm, you know, I'm not trying to leave you. You know, she says, if I wanted to leave you, I would have already done it. You know, she says stuff like that. Do you think that she loves you? Yeah, I think she loves me. How does she show that? She's like, I don't know, she's like, she's like real affectionate, you know, she, she'll show it a lot, you know, be around me, hugging me, stuff like that, you know. Does it feel different than any other relationship you've been in? Yeah, it's like, it's, I don't know, I can't explain, but. Is that why you need our help? Yeah, I want to know, like, if she's really out there, you know. When she says she's going to her friends or going home, you know, I want to know if she's she's out late at night or right. or what. Because I mean, I'm I'm the one being at home, you know, looking for her, and it's like you, know, you it's feel like, like maybe you're being played a little bit. Yeah, like you know, if if I'm gonna, you know, if you're gonna do that, let me know so you know I have to be waiting for you. I could leave, you know. My friend, the one that she used to date, because it was it was a. Um, they were together for like a year and a half, and then that's when I met her. Oh, really? Yeah. So it was like, you know, we're real cool with, you know, with each other, but I haven't talked to him lately. You know, I haven't seen him in a long time. How would you feel if you were betrayed by not only your girlfriend, but your old friend? Um, I wouldn't talk to him. I would just be like, you know, that's something, you know, tell me, let me know, you know. And if y'all would have told me, if y'all still had feelings for each other, you know, I could have, we would have still been cool, you know. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Crystal Raymond, age 18. A retail worker who is suspected of spending her lunch break with an ex-boyfriend. Investigation Day One. Shortly after surveillance begins, Cheetah's detective spot Ms. Raymond depart from her workplace during a lunch break. No foul appears to be committed until she gets into a white car with an unidentified man. The couple head over to a fast food restaurant for a quick lunch and conversation. Unfortunately, cheaters' detectives are unable to determine the nature of the words spoken between them. The two emerge from the restaurant holding hands. It is clear that some romantic interaction occurs. The male companion is later identified as Nick Chambers, Ms. Raymond's former boyfriend and a personal friend of client Miguel Mendez. Ironically, it was Nick Chambers who introduced Miguel to Ms. Raymond. Investigation Day 2. Although the time of Ms. Raymond's lunch break varies according to her schedule, the pattern of events during it seems to be quite repetitious. Once again, Companion Chambers picks up Ms. Raymond and takes her to the same fast food facility. But on this day, the two former lovers take things a little further kissing passionately in the car before Ms. Raymond returns to work. The concerns that Chambers should have had about his friendship with complainant Miguel Mendez are melted away by passion. Investigation Day 3. The patterns of Ms. Raymond and her companion are obvious and predictable. 
They once again go through the same lunchtime regimen. But afterwards, back at the parking lot, the temperature becomes hotter as Ms. Raymond engages in activities that are beyond the boundary for most people engaged in a committed relationship. Sensing something that's out of balance with his girlfriend, Miguel attempts to confront Ms. Raymond telephonically. Hey, what'd you do today? I was gonna go up there. Yeah. Hmm, I think I shouldn't have. Why? Why? Yeah. I don't know. I think you know why. There's probably somebody there to see you. Yeah. I left the library. With who? Cheaters has more than enough evidence to prove up the case and retrieves Miguel to present the unfortunate details. After the break, the confrontation. With Crystal's shocking disregard for commitment displayed in the surveillance, Cheaters tracks down Miguel to report the findings. Rushing to meet with cheaters, Miguel braces for the unsettling news. Our detectives were able to uh, get some information for you uh, that, that you asked us for, and, and I'd like to go ahead and show that to you. That's okay. All right. This is her leaving the mall, going to lunch. On this day of investigation, they went to a Wendy's restaurant. She went there with another gentleman. Man. Is that the guy that introduced y'all together? Yeah, that's him. Yeah. Do you have a problem with them holding hands and going to lunch every day? Yes, yes. Does she tell you that she go, she's going to lunch with this guy? No, she just tells me she eats in the mall. She says, you know how they have the food court or whatever? Really? She says she's there with friend that meets her up there or something. Really? Like one of her girlfriends or something. Here she is kissing him. He is the same guy. I understand it's uh, difficult to see them. She actually removes her clothes in this particular day. They took it further than we have ever seen the two weeks of the investigation. It's very surprising, shocking footage. What's going on right in public, right in the middle of the parking lot. Um, there are cars going by, people pulling up, and obviously they are having sex in the car. Okay. Do you want to see any more? Is this enough? No, it's enough. It's all right. Yeah, it's very frustrating. And I'm sorry I have to show it to you that way. How do you... How do you think you want to deal with this relationship after you talk to her? I don't think there is no relationship. Not anymore. You've been betrayed? After what I just saw, no. no there's no relationship. Okay. Okay, I got them. Locked in three ways. Don't wait and just back out. There they are down right in front of the Which car are they in? The white. Right there on the left. Okay, keep going. Green up. Laser coming out right there on your right hand side. I'm right behind you. Look to your left. See that white Camry? They're right behind that white Camry. There they are, right? Okay, okay, okay. Let's go. Get everybody out. See, they're right there. Everybody out, everybody out, everybody out. All right. Hang on, buddy. Wait, 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 wait one second. Wait with me one second. Get the back door. Move, go. Okay, go. Go, 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 go. Let's go, buddy. All right, come on. Right over here. What the? Man, what? What? Man. Man. Keep It's Tommy Grant from the TV What's Cheaters. Up, man? Punk. Playing with. Dog. Dog, what? Man, you're a little. Would you like? Man. Watch it. Man. Hold on, buddy. Come on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Would you like to explain what's been going on?
Coming up, the conclusion. Miguel came to us. Uh, he, he thought there may be something going on. He cared about you. He thought right. You want to explain what's going on? Ben. You know that? You want to explain why you've been lying to him? He's I've been lying. going to lunch with Aaron. Who's Aaron? You know who Aaron is. Yeah, I know who Aaron is. Who is, who is this guy? That is my ex-boyfriend. Your ex-boyfriend? Do these people have to be here? Yeah. <laughs> um. He needed our help. He thought that you were deceiving him. Why have you been deceiving him? Why haven't you been honest with him? Because I don't know how. He cared about you. You don't know well, how to be honest? I didn't think so. I didn't think so. I thought you were doing the same thing to me. No. Yeah, I did. No, I didn't know. No. If I knew, I wouldn't have done it. Do you care about it? Yeah. I mean, I do, but... <sighs> but you can have sex with somebody else? Is that what? You want to see the server that I had to show him? He cared you know about you. He came to us because he thought that uh, something may be going on. We've been watching you for two weeks. Come in. Okay, I got idea. I'm sorry. All that happens. Yeah, happens. I can't believe you. I can't believe you, man. Why would you do that? I don't know. Why would you do that? He loved you. He had, he's gone through pain before and he thought you were different. And then you started drifting away. Well, he I said, thought he was doing the same thing to me that every other guy does to me, and so I was just doing it back. Oh, so you go back with the guy that did it to you the worst? Why didn't you ever talk to him about it? It don't even matter. You see what I had to show him? You see how wrong that is? I'm sorry. It happens, like you said. A lot happens. Do you feel ashamed? Yes. You do? Did you care about him at least? Man, I'm ready. I'm... You ripped his heart out. Nothing. You ripped his heart out. All right, buddy. All right, buddy. No way. Hang in here with me. He's all right. No, he's okay. He's all right. Listen, you don't need that aggravation, man. You don't even need that. Okay? It's not even worth it. She acts like she cares, but nobody... nobody she cares, that, but she just took off again. Nobody that cares would do that. All right? That's why I just said I'm ready. It don't even matter, man. I just wanted it's to... It's over. She knows that you know. And I don't know what those tears were, except tears that realizing that she's just an idiot. Following the confrontation, Miguel questions his intuition regarding relationships. Coming up, Cheaters unveils the condition of Miguel's heart. But now, Cheaters presents Wes Cash. Wes returns to share his perspective on the night he came face to face with his lover's boyfriend. Wes Cash, age 22. Wes details his involvement with Casey Becker and how coming between her and her lover changed his life. I think the fault for the whole situation lies on both parties. I think Casey should have been more upfront and clear with 
Gabe, and I think Gabe probably shouldn't have hired investigators. He should have just came straight to her and talked to her about the situation. Hi, I'm Joey Greco with Cheaters. Are you Wes? You yes, sir. What the hell's going on? Who is this? This is Wes. Who is he? He's my boyfriend. Then what am I? You, you were a summer fling. I don't know what you were, but a summer this, fling. This is How are you gonna I say went? that after I left to come down here I'm to live with you? I'm not trying to hurt you. I'm not. I promise. How I'm are you not gonna say that after I came down here? It was your choice to move. You're the one that convinced me to. You wanted me to do it. You could have said no any time when we first met. You could have said no. The camera guys, after I told them to back away, they still weren't backing away and leaving me alone. I had a cattle prod on the back of my truck that I decided to pull out to try to help convince them to leave me alone. It convinced my camera guy after getting shocked with it, but unfortunately the bodyguards got their hands on it and took it from me. Security, step back. I told you to back off, didn't I? Didn't I? Hey, back off. Put it on the ground. Hey, sir, can you put that down? Put that down. Put that down. Put that down. Put that down. Can you all put that out of my face? Can you put that down? That's a weapon. Please, can you put it down? Hey, sir, that is a weapon. Can you put that down? Grab that. I was shocked and to realize that she hadn't canceled everything with him, and I was really concerned that she might not be telling me the whole truth. But I, th I think she should have gone on and confronted him long before the cameras ever got involved. Over the last two semesters, you've continued a relationship with Gabe. I didn't know how to break it off. So I'm not the kind of person who just, you know. Did you know that she was continuing to see him? No, sure. OK, so Captain, she's probably lying to you, too. After the whole ordeal was over with, me and Casey did go home and have a long conversation about what had happened and about our relationship. It really helped us farther along. We have decided to be more honest with each other and make sure that we know everything that's going on to where we won't ever have another surprise like this one come about. Miguel Mendez has decided to permanently break off his relationship with Crystal Raymond, with understandable reasoning. And on the grounds of disloyalty, he has also ended his friendship with his former running buddy, Nick Chambers. Ms. Raymond explains to cheaters that her actions are due in large part to the naivete of her youth. She now works two jobs to save money for a backpacking trip to Europe, where she hopes to find direction in her life. As for Chambers, he says he was simply doing what any man would naturally do if placed in a similar situation. Chambers maintains that he deceived no one and welcomes complainant Mendez's friendship again. Miguel is currently without love in his life. Oh, geez. Yeah, we got it right now. They're in the south. I'm tired of the excuses. This is something that I've got to know. They're together right now. There they are. Let's go. What's up, homie? Who are you, homie? Hey, 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 I love you. Real reality television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's private eyes on Cheaters. Welcome. I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching another exciting installment of Cheaters. Allow me to introduce Monica Tovar, a young woman who suspects her lover of playing the field. Desperate to discover the truth, Monica turns to the experts at Cheaters for assistance. Monica Tovar age 20, a student who fears her girlfriend may be exploring romance beyond the boundary of their commitment. How long have you been in your relationship? I've been with her for about a little bit over a year. Um, we've been friends for about four years. How did this come about? Well, we would talk about like curiosity, you know, well, I wonder what, what it would be like to be with a girl and she would felt the same way and then we're like, well, we'd be too scared to approach another female and then I think just one day it just happened. She doesn't call like she used to call. I mean, when I page her or when I call her on her phone, she doesn't return, she doesn't return my phone calls. Um, 
she tells me that she's going to a friend's house or to her cousin's house and then she doesn't end up there. She's not that passionate and affection towards me, affectionate towards me at all. She's like lightened up. Is it a little frustrating when mm -hmm. she's around? It is, because I ask her what's wrong, nothing. You know, are you okay? Yeah. Is there something you want to talk about? No. Have you talked to her about this? Yeah, I brought it to her attention and she's like, no, it's just you're thinking you don't trust me and this and that and you need to understand I'm going to school and I'm working and this and that. I don't know, if she's cheating, I'm just gonna, it's, it'd be best for me just to leave her alone. Because if it was meant to be, then we would be together and she wouldn't be cheating on me. But you're gonna sit here and go through all this pain. Yeah. I don't want to lose her. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters Licensed Investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Jennifer Alviso, age 20, a teller who is suspected of shortchanging the truth with counterfeit accounts of her true whereabouts. Investigation day one. Cheetah's detectives move into position and quickly film Alviso visiting an unidentified man at his place of employment. Monica's earlier suspicions are correct. The man is later determined to be Alviso's ex-boyfriend. To make matters worse, Alviso promises Monica earlier that morning to give Monica a ride from school around noon. During break time at the male companion's work, the two eat a quick lunch at a fast food restaurant. As the food is consumed, so is the duo with lust for each other's space. Hello? Tony, where were you? I had to stay at work. I stayed until 1.45 waiting for you and I called you on your phone and you didn't answer. How'd you get home? The bus. I walked home, sorry. I didn't even know I'm sorry. Did you want me to send you a cab next time? I couldn't do I couldn't make it. Back at his work, Alviso says goodbye in a way that Monica disapproves. The lingering, passionate kiss clarifies that the hot trail is the path to Alviso's true character. Investigation day two. The case takes an unexpected turn when Cheater's detectives, expecting to catch Alviso with her ex-boyfriend again, Instead, uncover her picking up another woman at her apartment complex. The woman later identifies herself as Samantha. Inside the car, Alviso and companion Samantha cause the mercury to rise in what appears to be an attempt to exchange faces. From there, the couple run a few errands, including getting gas at a local service station, and while filling up the tank, the two hug as tight as a nut and a bolt could be screwed. Investigation day three. Like schoolgirls at recess, Alviso and companion Samantha spend this day shopping in a nearby mall, casually drifting through a toy store looking at baby dolls. Later, things turn a bit more adult as the two shop for lingerie together. Cheaters is unable to go behind their closed doors, so it's up to Monica to imagine what they do with their new nighttime clothing. Deeming it unnecessary to continue surveillance, Cheaters closes the case and delivers the facts to Monica. After the break, the confrontation. With Jennifer's disgraceful behavior clearly evidenced, Cheaters rushes to put an end to the deception being endured by Monica. In an attempt to contain her frustration, Monica takes a personal moment before viewing the surveillance. The reason why we pulled you out from your party tonight and wanted to get you down here, um, obviously I think you know, but the fact is your girlfriend has been cheating on you. And I'm going to show you some footage right here. On our first day of investigation, we followed her to a courier company. 
in this industrial park. And here she is with this gentleman we later identified as her old boyfriend. They then got in her car and drove to have lunch that day. Now, you knew they were friends and they, they were keeping in touch. Yeah. But as you'll see in this footage, they're just sitting next to each other, but they start to get a little more contact. And now here they are outside his work and he gives her a very lengthy kiss, not as just two friends would, would do. <coughs> now at this point, we figured we had enough documentation to call you and say, look, here's what we found. She's been with this guy and they're kissing, they're holding hands. I would call this cheating. She is not being honest with you about her relationship with her ex-boyfriend. But we decided we would pick up a few more days of footage and it was even more shocking. This was the second day. We followed her over to this apartment building. We found her coming out with a girlfriend of hers, apparently. Some She's a having girl. a, with a girl too? Do you recognize her? Yeah. Now normally you wouldn't think it would be a problem, but when they got in the car and shut the door, we have footage of them, them embracing and kissing. So obviously, there's something going on here as well. Did you recognize her at all? Mm -mm. No, I've never seen her before. Again, here they are. They ran errands this day. They're embracing again. Here she is kissing this girl again. The third day of investigation, we caught up with her again with this same woman. Now here they are in, in a toy store. Do you know when this was? When that day? Two days ago. Yeah. What did she tell you that she was doing? She was at her cousin's house. At her cousin's house. Here she is shopping, looking at lingerie here. And then they went to the, the dressing room together in the same dressing room and went in. And at that point, we decided we had enough documentation and enough footage to to let you know and show you what was going on and the fact that she has been lying to you what did she tell you she was doing tonight that she was going to be at home because she was tired and she had to go to school tomorrow and she had to work and because i invited her to come over to the house for the party but right. she didn't want to come said she couldn't come yeah do you know she where she is tonight no, I don't. I called her and she was at home and I spoke with her and I called her maybe 10 minutes later and she wasn't answering the phone, so I didn't know. No. She's not at home. She is at that apartment complex with this other woman tonight, today, right now. And that's why we thought it was so important that you come over here and, and meet with us because we can go confront her right now. <laughs> And, and you can talk to her and ask her why she's lying to you. Okay, would you like to do that? Yeah. Do you want to talk to her? Yeah. Where are they parking? Parking over here to the right of the building. Stop right there, John. Stop right there. Stop right there, John. Stop right there, John. Why don't you leave your place? I think this is him. Is that them? Okay, wait, wait. I mean, wait, wait, me. Come on, huh? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Come on. What are you doing? Who's this? Who's this? My friend. I can't have friends. What are you doing with her? I seen you on video kissing her, hugging all up on her. What is that? I did you know we were together? No, I did not. Coming up, the conclusion. My name's Tommy Grant from the TV show Cheaters, and we have surveillance you footage mean, of you. What do you mean fooling her? She's just your friend with... What the hell's going on? Can you explain? So... You're and, in a relationship. And Michael, you've been back with Michael at Whataburger? 
We just went out for lunch. I seen you on video. You were kissing him all up on him. Can you explain yourself? Yeah, explain yourself, Jennifer. Hold on. She's in a relationship with her. Did you I know I gave that? you everything, everything. Everything you wanted, you had. I was true to you the whole time. Sorry. You ain't even worth it. Come on. Come on, baby. <laughs> She said that was her friend. Yeah. And that her and Mike just went to lunch together. So obviously she's denying the whole situation. Do you think she was lying to the other girl as well? The other girl seemed so surprised by it. She must have been. She didn't know she didn't know what was going on at all. But I needed to know. Was that important for you? Yeah. After the confrontation, young Monica considers how she allowed herself to take this turn. At the end of the show, Cheaters discovers how Monica picks up the pieces of her life. But first, Cheaters welcomes Steve Hepner. Steve returns from the Dan Newberry case to shed light on his involvement in the tryst uncovered by Cheaters. Steve Hepner, age 31. Steve describes the near-death experience he received, courtesy of Cheater's client, Dan Newberry. Well, me and Josie were in the back seat making out, and uh, about that time, you know, I kind of heard something and didn't think anything of it. And uh, all of a sudden, I felt somebody slam into the back end of the car, looked up, and we were getting pushed into the lake. And uh, I knew straight away who it was, I mean, without a doubt. And. Uh, as fast as I could, I jumped out and, you know, at least tried to keep from drowning. I don't know if you can see through all these trees. I'm probably just gonna get out. You can just leave the truck right here and we'll just go on foot. No, I can't handle it. Right, right. Dan, 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 Come on, man. That's not why we're here. Do not put yourself in jeopardy. Let me get at her. No, calm down. After I got out of the car and, you know, made sure Josie was all right, um, you know, I kind of wanted to confront him, but, I mean, I knew the situation. It was, you know, that was her husband, so. But, um, you know, all the cameras started running around us and, you know, probing us, I guess is the best way to put it. And, uh. I saw him push her or shove her or something, and I've you know, been taught better than that, so I wasn't going to put up with it. Ah, come on, come on. 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 Come on.
gentlemen. Stop, 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 let him, let him go. Just let him the hell go. I don't care. Get him, guys. 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 Well, I couldn't really say the guy was psycho. You know, he was hurt. Well, that's, you know, that's to say the least. I mean, you know, he'd been with her for three years. I don't know if I'd have gone as far as he had, but you know, I'm not in his shoes. You have turned out to be one low life piece of. You being here with someone else isn't right. Okay. Well, I know that what brought you here isn't right. If you weren't out in a, in a park in, in, in his dad's car with someone other than your husband, I wouldn't be here. And that's Let really him what drive it my car. down to, right? You are one sick individual. You know, it takes two to tango, and it was me and Josie, and, you know, I, can, I knew the relationship wasn't going to last, but, you know, you know, adult, you know, you make stupid decisions, and you got to live with them, you know. I, like I said, I'm sorry, you know, I feel sorry for Dan, because, you know, Lord knows I wouldn't want to be in that position. Monica Tovar and Jennifer Alviso continue to maintain a friendship. Both admit that the relationship is strained. Suspect Alviso states that she's sorry about her deceit, but holds resentment toward complainant Tovar for not being more forthright about her suspicions. Monica, meanwhile, struggles to regain trust in her former lover and wonders whether the shattered friendship can be salvaged. Companion Samantha says the complainant's actions surprise her and is currently trying to gather herself and decipher her feelings. At this time, she's undecided about her relationship with suspect Alviso and needs time to reconsider the